Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and in today's episode of Great Engineer Terrible Driver we are going to design a 1948 GT Premium car in automation and hot lap it in BeamNG Drive on the automation test track. What driver score will I achieve today? We shall find out. 1948 it's not easy to build something that is fast in that era and a GT Premium car doesn't really have to be. It needs to tick uh, quite a few other boxes though. And the GT category needs four seats. That differentiates it from uh, the hypercar uh, category. And yeah, it's not a hypercar, but it's more or less what you would consider was the um, forefather of the hypercar because the hypercar is also a little bit more towards the yeah a bit more pres pure prestigious comfort a little bit more excess not so much pure performance but top speed is, uh, is a little important so 1945 coupe uh, yeah or coupe rather we can go with this one there's a smaller version of this but oh wait a second do they have the same cabin size? Well, the GT Premium category probably likes um, the larger car a little better. So this will be interesting, uh, very interesting actually. Panel material, full aluminium because that is what you would design it off. Steel would require presses and so on and this vehicle you would not want to build in a larger factory which has presses. And thus we are going with a hand-built space frame. There was a bit of a discussion on the forums lately about space frame being uh, like the high-tech choice and uh, no I really don't think that. I mean space frame was used in all kinds of things and in construction and whatnot. So it is low-tech, it's just extremely labor-intensive. It's by no means high-tech. But, but I can see why you would be led to believe that, uh, because only the most premium and prestigious vehicles would be built with a space frame. And also the most sporty ones, although that's probably more a necessity and one which avoids a uh, ladder frame, which is just garbage for that kind of vehicle. So, uh, chassis material it is. Mm, do we care? This one would probably not be galvanized. You're not supposed to drive this much. So, what do we go for here? Well, uh, the most sensible option, of course, is uh, if you are a premium manufacturer, go with double wishbone straight ahead. This can be considered too much of uh, a problem. Oh yeah, actually. Actually, it would be. Because we already have the space frame, which has insanity engineering time compared to the letter frame. But on the other hand, hmm, if you're going with a lot of engineering time already, and this would going for this option might be sensible. Three versus eight months of engineering. So overall, it boils down to opportunity cost. Do you need to get this thing out quickly or do you want to have it like really pristine when it comes out? Yeah, something to think about. Also, you need to think about the engine. That's probably not... Oh, well, you can probably make it a little bit more more basic. Because we don't need all that fancy performance back in 1948. You can't put it down on the road anyway. Alright, with that amount of nuance added to this discussion, uh, let's move on. Like the sensible way is definitely to go space frame, even though engineering time is super long. If you need to uh, get it out quickly, go ladder frame and make first and struts. That probably works as well. But in this case, let's go real premium. And if we're talking real premium, we are of course talking V16s! Are we going in V16? Really? Uh, how long is engineering time? 20! Ouch! Uh, V12 is 16. Yeah, I mean... Uh, we want to make the car and engine engineering to take the same amount of time. Uh, let's see how we are doing with a V16. 
although that's a little too excessive, I believe. Well, if we are going to put it in any car, apart from the hypercar we reasonably built in 2020 there with the V16. Was it a V16? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was awesome. So, um, yeah, V12 would be the go-to choice. And you kind of need to make it tiny, because otherwise you make way too much power. How about a 3.5 liter V16? And we are going with direct acting overhead cam. It's like the, the cheapest option here, isn't it? Yeah, engineering time 13.2. Cast interiors, uh, internals, and then we lower our compression. Start out with seven, yeah. We don't need to rev this high. Maybe 45 cam profile. Naturally aspirated, obviously. And okay, yeah, that might be a problem. <laughs> like single barrel carb. <laughs> like, oh, okay, that doesn't even exist, that option. Oh, shit. Still has. What? What is going on there? <laughs> it does look pretty amazing, though. I have to give it to that. And, uh, yep, 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 regular leaded. Let's try this out first and see where we end up with the engineering time. This might be too crazy. Way too crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> what an engine. <laughs> Look at that shit. Uh, long tubular might be fine too. But long oh, tubular might be fine. Short cast? Nah. It doesn't look like anything. But this setup is just amazing. It does make quite a bit of power. It can even rev it. Like, look at that shit. Engine that... Road car engine that revs to 6.4 back in the day. 1948. That is <laughs> some serious stuff. 168 horsepower. That is a hypercar for back in the day. Uh-oh. Well, at least we need to make the, the car really heavy as well, but... The engineering time is not something I'm looking forward to, but we need to have context with the car. That is important. Uh, like the the calculations aren't um, aren't synchronized yet. We have the new way of calculating engineering time implemented in the car designer, where it is an n-dimensional vector which for each section gets added orthogonally, and then the resulting vector length is your engineering time. Um, sounds complicated, really isn't. But, yeah, that, that is how it's calculated there. While in the engine, it's just straight up adding all the components as if you were designing or engineering parts in sequence, which wouldn't be the case. So we're going with the coupe body. Yeah, that, that, I mean, if you look at this bonnet, would you expect an inline four engine? Nah. You probably would expect an inline 8 or a V12. Okay, a bit of morphing done. This is looking like a beast of a car. Fixtures and paint we are doing later. And now, longitudinal rear wheel drive manual, four gears, yes. Open diff. Yep, yep, don't need anything else. Uh, sports compound, maybe? On the other hand, we hmm, we might want to have a bit of drivability in this thing. With medium compound tires, we only pay 159. Really? That's not much. And sports compound, 195. Alright. Yeah, let's go with sports compound then for now. We can change it later. For pad type, I'm not entirely sure. Th these things will fade like crazy. And we don't really get enough brake force without the, the fix to um, brake force for for the early brakes. That is currently a bug in automation. Um, it's a factor too, too low for the old brakes. No under tray, nothing needed there. Cooling airflow stays at 50. We do want four seats and handmade and luxury interior. 
And then advanced 40 safety. And here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, there we already have it. Low comfort. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the... We haven't done the suspension setup yet. This is not comfortable at all. Uh, even the sporty one would be... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's a lot better already. That's very aggressive, though. Um, let's tune it in normal tune. And, oh! Oh, that's pretty neat. So, um, while these calculations are unfi unfinalized, it is something to think about. You probably want to f uh, have the car finish at the same time or around there when the en engine is finished. Otherwise, you could invest a bit more into one of them. Um, just a little bit more reliability or whatnot. Just give your engineers a bit more time so that they're happy. Give them, give them a ball pit to play in and all that good stuff. But yeah, 34 months here is decent. That's very long, by the way, uh, for an old car like this. But it's fine. It's fine. We can we can deal with this. And here we're 32. That will still increase because we need some quality slider action. And oh my God, those brakes! Those brakes are not good. All right, plus. Five brake quality still absolutely awful now imagine now this is very close to 1940 so it's about ish a factor two we are at around 1200 here so both brakes would be around the 2400 mark uh, with the fix and then we are much more in range where we are supposed to be yeah that makes a lot of sense okay Rob get around to fixing that please Interior. Okay. Well, this is a GT Premium car. And GT Premium certainly likes some premium shit that is finely crafted. I'm amazed, by the way, that we are getting such high drivability still. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, more top speed? Yes. Less wheel spin, please. Oh, we might want to play with this slider too. Make them a little longer. Get rid of some wheel spin. We found a sweet spot around there. This car will be scary to drive. And uh, remember, kids, you only have one braking maneuver available to you before the brakes fade. Aerodynamics? Uh, I really don't want to touch that. <laughs> because... For obvious reasons, <laughs> if you make it even faster, you get even more brake fade. But there should be some more in the uh, suspension setup for us to deal with. Can we make... Oh no, bottoming out there. But better suspension on a car like this is very valuable. Drivetrain, we haven't looked at that much yet, apart from setting this up. Uh, do they like some quality here? Probably, just a, just a bit. Oh, and tires, of course, of course, yes. Plus five? Yeah, not, they don't cost much. Oh, no, now they cost much. <laughs> Ouch, 1,700. Yeah, it's getting a little bit more expensive around here, but it's still doing well. Oh, one thing we have not uh, touched upon yet is the steering. The steering needs to be improved a little bit, even though it doesn't have even though it does not have anything selected here, of course you can improve how the steering feels and how heavy it is, how well optimized it is, and that gives you a decent amount of control in here. That is probably a little bit overpowered. I have to give it to you. There needs to be a higher base modifier. I need to note that down. This is a, a heavy car. 1,200 kilograms? Well, that's that's fine though. So I think we're more or less done with this. 192.6. 35 months. And what was the engine? 34.3. Well, yep, there you have it. It's still reasonable. <laughs> Both are very long engineering, but uh, yeah, it, it fits. 
it does fit with the engine. So if we wanted to go with a, um, a car that has less opportunity cost, I would switch it down to a V12, same setup otherwise, and then go with, uh, what would it be? It would be a McPherson front and semi-trailing rear. Oh, what we haven't done yet is put some quality in here. Maybe, maybe we can get some more. No, that doesn't help them. That re oh, exhaust quality could help. That could help. Oh yes, it does. It doesn't add much to the engineering time. I mean, we uh, do have half a month left. <laughs> then we can spend on something. Slightly higher cam profile, make it even more scary to drive. And now it is time to give this engine a go. Oh, it's scary. Okay. Here, here we go. Here we go. That's a proper V16. It will look great in the car. There it is sitting. Yeah, it fits neatly in this massive bonnet, doesn't it? Super low mounted too. So uh, low center of gravity. This should drive well. But now it is time to um, firstly set up the suspension correctly and then send it around the test track. Oh, I think I found the inflection point here between uh, terminal oversteer and... Oh yes, oh yes, you can see it in the score. If you get massive score jumps for just one click, then that is usually what happens in the fast steering, that it switches from being controlled to escaping you. Overall, some very, very nice stats. I think I'm done here with the suspension tuning. That's fine. You don't need to push it any further. Okay, so test track first, and then we are going to design this thing. Oh, uh, markets. Oh, yes. Ma Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can see it works. There is no hyper or supercar category in during that time, of course. They come into existence a lot later because it's more or less impossible to build actual supercars or hypercars back in the day. And people didn't even know they wanted them. So yes, um, luxury premium 120 and GT premium, well, 195. Decent stats. Let's see what that scores in Froenia. Can they afford it? Ooh, yeah, they can. And just barely. Uh, but man, 198 even. And in Hetvesia, 199. Now for the test track. Uh oh, this will be so fucking scary to drive. Well, it's not fast through these corners, as you would expect. But oh shit. <laughs> oh shit, it is fast. It is very, very fast. Does it hit? 190 before the slingshot and barely has to lift off and we're coming to the line accelerating through two minutes 42 82 it's not a fast car per se very fast for its era but man it's definitely it will be a looker when this kind of super luxury vehicle comes rolling along but now, to make it a looker, we actually have to design this thing. All right, give me a moment.
It is done. The Osprey Valhalla. Look at it. Isn't it pretty? Yes, it is. So well designed. Well, uh, yeah, it, it's decent enough. It's decent enough. I don't really like the the tail lights, but um, some design recalls as per usual. Front rear, not a f necessarily a fan of that line going down there, but that is, seems to be the only way I can replicate this bit. Yeah. And there's the window, and I didn't want to put it on the roof as well. That seems weird. Also, yes, dual exhaust. I changed the engine around to be dual exhaust. I forgot about that. Uh, makes sense for V16. And I think that gives us higher higher ratings too. But it also means that we need to rerun the test track lap real quick. So let's just do that and see what time comes out of it. 242.82.242.75. Okay, slightly faster. But all right, I think this car is now ready to be exported. How will it drive in BMG? Will it throw the, the rear around with every braking maneuver? We shall find out. <laughs> All right, let's, let's export this thing. The Osprey Valhalla. It's looking pretty in the photo studio as well. The Osprey Valhalla. Yeah, there we have it. It's a good looker. And not only is it a good looker, it does drive pretty awesome too. It is... It feels really premium. <laughs> feels really premium. All right. So this is, of course, full manual. Rum, rum. All right. We have four gears. Yep. And clutch and throttle, of course. So let's go. And yeah, there's some power in this one. Oh yes. Okay. Well, um, I shall do a little bit of warm up. As you can see, this is required with this vehicle. Um, but it should be good, should be good, should be fun, and then I see you in the time trial. The Osprey Valhalla is actually a really forgiving car if you drive it with some respect. And I was, I was astounded by its, uh, how forgiving it is even at higher speeds. Yes, the only thing, <laughs> it's like, so it feels like the archetypal GT premium car from super way back or the way I imagine them at least it's like really decent performance Even for modern standards. It's pretty decent performance But man the brakes Then just nothing happens <laughs> And it becomes unstable on the braking too not nearly as much as episode 1 the 1955 was it 55 sports coupe that was that was terrible Bad, bad setup, killer up. But uh, this is well set up too. So let's get to the starting line and uh, try it out. And we are ready to go. Staring down the nose of the beast. Here we are, and oh, oh grip, grip, grip. Come on, grip. There we have to grip. And breaking for first. Good, smooth through here. Seventy-ish kilometers an hour is fast. Okay. And this thing has more power than we can use here. Yeah, it's different to the taxi we tested last. And... There, third. Nice. Now, Brian's bent. A little tricky. Just lift off. Tap the, the brake if you need to, the car to come around. And... And here we go. Smooth, 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 smooth. And... Downshift, and there we go. Yes. I didn't dare to shift before the turn. So tricky while riding the corner. And. Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa. That was scary, but. A speedy throw here at around 80. And. Down straight, third. Daffy Flyer coming up to the slingshot, but first. We've got a speed to fourth. Go, 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 go. And fourth. Yes. Now, slingshot magic. Look at this. Look at this. was full throttle we did lift and now we need to lose some speed okay 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 all right that's good and we turn this is too much turning and we're out of here 
Whew, that was a little scary. Not the fastest way to go through there. I think you can go something like maybe 95-ish. Oh, come on, lose some speed. Lose some speed, shitty brakes. There we go, smooth. 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 And second gear, full throttle. Uh, yes, I know. The concept is that you're supposed to be in the correct gear when exiting the corner, but I'm not. And oh, 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 that was a little too fast. That was a little too fast, but I caught it. There we go, exiting the corner. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, third gear and some braking for Cossack Corner. Second gear again and up here. Whoa, full throttle. That was a little too happy. Had to correct a lot. And we're sliding here too. Whoa. Oh, this was a little dirty lap. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Stabilize, stabilize. <laughs> What the fuck? Okay. Ah, there we go. Oh, I have seen cleaner laps. <laughs> A 243.45. Not the cleanest lap of all, but man, this thing is pretty well set up for what it is. It is power that is controllable. And as long as you don't try to slow down from like 200 kilometers an hour, it behaves. It behaves like it's as it should. Uh, drives beautifully. The Osprey Valhalla. And in uh, BMG, I managed to drive it around the test track in 2 minutes 43.45, as compared to automation's time, which was 2 minutes 42.75. And that is damn close. And that leads me to a driver score of 99.5 in this thing. Yeah, it must be well set up then. Although, mm, the sliding and stuff, yeah. yeah. But I, I think in the hands of a capable driver, so maybe you, um, that thing would be a lot faster than the automation test track time. And you can find out yourself by downloading the car from the description down below. you find the .car file there, as always. And I hope you enjoyed, and see you guys next time.